like to call to order the town council regular session to order at 7:40. The date is Monday, January 24th, 2011. If we could stand, please, for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Could we have the roll call, please, Dale? Council President Whaley. Here. Council Vice President McAtee. Here. Councilwoman Eddy. Here. Councilwoman Fogarty. Here. Councilman O'Neill. Here. All members present. Thank you, Dale. Which brings us to the approval of minutes of previous meetings. We have the work sessions for January 4th, January 5th, and January 10th, 2011. I move approval of the work session minutes for those dates. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 5-0-0. We also have um, approval of the minutes of the regular session, December 20th and January 10th. I move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 5-0-0. Would anybody care to have anything removed from the consent agenda? Do we have a motion? I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ready to vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 5 0 0. Okay, which brings us to the public hearing. I'd like to open the public hearing. This is a public hearing relative to the proposed fiscal year 2011-12 to 2016-17 capital improvement program as shown on exhibit one attached here too. And we have had multiple meetings on the capital improvement. Town Council has met on January 4th. Um, that was our first capital improvement work session, and then we met on January 5th for our second capital improvement work session, and uh, there was a meeting on January 13th, which was a joint capital improvement meeting with the town council and the school committee, which brings us to tonight. So I'll turn it over to Steve. Thank you. I'll give a uh, brief review on the intent of the capital improvement program. As has been said uh, many times, the capital improvement program is both a budget document, but more importantly, a planning document. It's a planning document that's prepared on an annual basis by the town manager's office and by charter. The capital improvement program uh, must be adopted by the town council on or before February 1st of each year. We develop a capital improvement program really to meet three specific goals. One is to provide a comprehensive need statement for the infrastructure needs of the community, both municipal, school, and each of our utilities. Second, it's to provide a prioritized implementation schedule for meeting those community uh, needs. And third, to provide the financial data and analysis to determine the community's ability to be able to uh, finance the cost of the capital infrastructure improvements as well as uh, to be able to incorporate the debt service requirements into the town's long-term uh, operating budget uh, proposals. It's a six-year program. The program year that we're looking at is the 11, uh, fiscal year 11-12 through 16-17 year. So we take a look at those six years and move forward. On tonight's Exhibit 1, we see that the uh, presentation says the capital budget. The capital budget is the first year of the six-year capital improvement program on the pay-as-you-go portion of the budget. When I say pay-as-you-go, it means each year will be incorporated into the operating budget for that fiscal year. So for the 11-12 year, for us to be able to meet the cost presented on Exhibit 1 under the uh, uh, Section A, B, C, and D, would mean that it would be incorporated into the budget uh, 
and would be subject to further review prior to the council adopting a final budget in April. The general fund uh, proposes uh, first year funding of $1,239,000 as detailed as 15 different projects. Most of the items that are listed within the general fund are dollars either to be expended on the uh, purchase of equipment or uh, standalone uh, capital needs being addressed or for the money to be placed into a capital reserve fund so that once uh, uh, additional monies have been accumulated to meet uh, projected uh, uh, program costs, the project can be incorporated. In some cases, we're looking three years out. In other cases, five years out as far as being able to provide funding through a number of different funding sources. Property tax being the last funding sort of last resort, but we also look to use uh, third party monies that may come from state federal grants or from impact fees uh, or other uh, uh, third party revenues that uh, uh, each of the projects may be able to attract. Uh, in addition to the general fund, we then show the water fund with two projects totaling $57,000. Any of the uh, funding presented in this documentation for the water fund, wastewater fund, uh, are paid for through the user uh, fees generated from each of those utilities. So there's no property tax impact associated with those programs for either the water fund or on page two, the wastewater fund. I'd also note with the wastewater fund, the proposed budget for the 11-12 year is $310,000. Since we operate the wastewater treatment facilities as a regional uh, program on behalf of the University of Rhode Island and the town of Narragansett, of that $310,000, approximately $185,000 would be the responsibility of the ratepayers in South Kingstown. Each of the items that are listed there have shared uh, service uh, functions other than, uh, actually all of them have shared uh, services functions with either the university or the university uh, and the uh, town of Narragansett that would be paying toward the total $310,000 cost. Uh, Sub-item uh, D for the school fund is the pay-as-you-go portion of the uh, school needs for the 11-12 uh, uh, for the 11 12 year. The uh, school system has uh, uh, placed into consideration uh, the use of $270,000 of the school fund to meet seven projects that are listed on the sheet. Uh, I have mentioned to the uh, council in the uh, various work sessions on the capital budget that the $270,000 uh, presentation uh, is uh, $160,000, I believe, above, it was $160,000 $160, over what the base year funding was in the current year. So that may be difficult for them to be able to, uh, to keep in the budget by the time they submit a budget to the, uh, uh, to the council or the council decides on the transfer of uh, property taxes to the school fund. The, uh, the second component of the capital improvement program looks at the uh, long-term projects that uh, are necessary to meet infrastructure needs. At uh, the 2011-12 edition of the Capital Improvement Program looks at approximately 17 projects that would be uh, spread across the uh, recreation leisure service area, general municipal program, or school purpose programs. Of those, uh, uh, those programs, we would be looking at uh, approximately $11,250,000 in bonding, so of the uh, $20,935,000 shown of those 17 projects, 11.25 million would be coming from bonding. Of those bonds that would be necessary, 6.5 million have already been authorized by the voters and 4.7 million would need to be considered uh, in November of 2012 at the next uh, uh, election cycle. There's, uh, capital improvement funding that will be transferred, as I mentioned earlier, many of the projects that are listed under the general fund have monies that are transferred into capital reserves. There's about $4.4 million that would be necessary to go 
uh, toward those projects out of the pay-as-you-go portion of the capital budget. Impact fees would account for about $1.15 million, and uh, there would be secured funds. These are grant dollars that are in hand or uh, monies that are already held in the capital reserves of about $3.5 million for the total uh, over the six years of the $20,935,000. Two other components, or three other components within the uh, capital uh, improvement program is that the uh, town zoning ordinance requires that the town establish uh, impact fees and, uh, and revisits the value of the impact fees on, on an annual basis. We are recommending uh, education facilities uh, impact fees for single and duplex houses for the 11-12 year at $3,244. This is a reduction of $117 from the current year rate of $3,361. We're also uh, recommending uh, that the multi-household units uh, with two bedrooms or less, which is held at 50% of the single family home value would decline uh, by $59 to uh, 1,622. And the accessory apartments, which is in at 25% of a single family, would go down $29 or $811 for the, uh, for the cost. We have looked at reductions in the education facilities fees after reviewing the capital costs associated with the construction of the uh, Broad Rock Middle School and the refinancing that was done of some of the initial bonds that uh, were, uh, were issued where those have been refinanced at a lower interest rate. This provides for savings both as far as the impact fees as well as the community in general uh, through the uh, debt service uh, payments. For recreational facilities also required to be reviewed on an annual basis through the, uh, the zoning ordinance, uh, we're looking at setting up a new structure. We're looking at the single household uh, fee going down to $2,957 or $806 below the current year rate of $3,763. The reason for the, uh, uh, for the reduction is that the formula that's used in establishing recreation facility fees looks at what uh, at land values prior, uh, last year the land value per acre of uh, developable land was estimated at $140,000. After the revaluation, that uh, uh, number was uh, uh, downgraded by the assessor's office to $110,000. So when you use $110,000, assuming that you need 10 and a half acres for every 1,000 people, if the average house has 2.56 people, you end up with a fee of, uh, it's a mathematical formula that brings us to the 2957. What we're recommending this year is to uh, set up a, uh, a two-tiered approach. Since uh, what we have looked at is that uh, by using 2.56, this looked at uh, persons per household, this looked at houses that were being constructed with three bedrooms or more. What we found is that with uh, two bedroom or less units that are being constructed, that uh, there should be a discounting from the average family size of 2.56 uh, with a 25% reduction. So if we calc at 1.92 people per household, it would mean that for uh, units with two bedrooms or less, the uh, recreation impact fee would be set at $2,218, down from the original 3,763 in the current year. We think this is a necessary change in the uh, recreation fees based on uh, really uh, trying to ensure on a yearly basis that we're capturing what the true cost should be for those fees. The last area that's defined in the, in the zoning ordinance that requires updates on an annual basis is calculating the in lieu uh, fee uh, associated with affordable housing. In South Kingstown uh, zoning ordinance, there's a provision for affordable housing through what's called inclusionary zoning. Inclusionary zoning requires affordable housing units to be constructed in a new subdivision of greater than five units. Uh, if the units uh, cannot fit within the subdivision that's to be constructed, there's a, uh, a four-step review that the planning board would make. One is they would try to determine whether the units could be placed within the subdivision itself. 
Second, they would look at whether uh, the uh, developer could purchase addition, uh, purchase property outside of the subdivision that could then be developed as affordable housing. Uh, third uh, would also be another, uh, another form of, uh, uh, of being able to create affordable housing outside of the subdivision itself. Or the last resort would be that they would be required to pay a fee to the town equal to what the difference was between an affordable housing unit uh, costing and a, uh, the average cost of, uh, of housing in South Kingstown. The zoning ordinance requires that we look at two things. One is what the, uh, the uh, Rhode Island housing establishes as the median uh, family income for Washington County, and assuming that 80% of that, uh, that value is what a uh, family that would be able to afford an affordable housing unit. They then look at taking 30% of that value and coming up with what the value is that's available for a person who's at 80% of median income to be able to spend 30% of their income for housing purposes. We then have to subtract out what the cost of insurance and taxes would be, and it works out to approximately $1,000 that's available. Using a uh, a rate of 4.69% as a uh, projected uh, mortgage rate, it would mean that the house could be worth up to $198,000. So if the average house in South Kingstown, which is required to be reviewed through the Warren Group, comes in at $300,000, if there's $198,000 as the maximum purchase price for affordable housing units, then it would mean that the in lieu fee for the 2011-12 uh, year would be set at $102,000. Uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions that the council or the public may have on any of the uh, individual line items within the capital improvement program. I would also note that the capital budget as presented at $1,239,000 for the general fund, if adopted by the council, does not necessarily uh, provide the last review at this time. The last review on the size of the capital budget for the 11-12 year will, once it becomes a component, of the, uh, the operating budget, the general fund of the town, which the council will have final review on in, uh, in April. Uh, if the 1239 is approved tonight, it doesn't necessarily mean that the 1239 will appear in the manager's budget as well, because I've got to also look at that again in relation to what impact it's going to have on the overall budget if we were to fund at that level. The funding level for the 11-12 uh, uh, year is $18,000 above what Bayshear funding is. It's attainable, but only attainable if, uh, if other increases that we see in the operating program do not take a higher priority than the capital facilities planning that's been presented in the document. Thank you, Steve. Do we have questions here at the table? Okay, seeing no questions, this and is a oh, I'm sorry, Jim. Yes, Steve, um, if winter continues at the severity level, is that $610,000 uh, even close to uh, uh, realistic? I, I'm sorry, the $610,000? $610,000 you have for road improvement program, is that close to reasonable uh, if this winter continues in its severity? I think that it's, it's borderline it's borderline uh, because let's look at it this way. We're looking at bond requirements of about uh, uh, $2 million being required in addition to the 610, which really is the first year and goes out uh, approximately at the same level for the next five years thereafter. One of the things that we have traditionally done with the road improvement program is that if we underspend the operating budget for the public, uh, public works department is we would transfer those dollars so we could use that as a cushion. Uh, obviously this year does not look as if we'll uh, be returning any, any surpluses uh, based on where we, where we stand with the uh, winter maintenance program. But I think that, uh, uh, that the amount of work that's laid out over the next six years for us to be able to get it accomplished with proper controls in place is probably as much as we can accomplish with the staff that we have in place at this point. Right. Two quick other questions. Um, accessory apartments, um, is that detached or attached? 
on one single property. They, they can really be in they have the accessory apartment. It's, square feet, it's, it, it's based on the 850 square feet. Okay. Is it 850 or 750? I think it's 850 or is it seven, 750? Is that okay. All right. And lastly, that this is your budget. So, um, I mean, your capital, um, program here. So I'm wondering why under the school fund, you didn't put 110,000 Y270. It's based on what's been submitted by the school committee to date. Uh, I think that the major uh, reason, as was spelled out at, uh, by the, uh, the superintendent at the uh, meeting on the 15th of January, was that they had downsized their capital budget uh, during the current year and did away with, uh, with projects that they would like to have accomplished but that they didn't have the dollars to accomplish. That's why I think that when they evaluate the 11-12 budget that's before them at this point, they're going to have difficulty in being able to uh, uh, provide for that type of a funding level. And they'll have to again look at whether or not uh, all of those seven projects are uh, in fact urgent uh, and within funding level. The key word is then proposed capital budget. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For the questions here at the table. Okay, this is a public hearing, so if anyone from the public would like to entertain any questions, please come forward. Sometimes I feel like I'm the only guy that wants to talk, but uh, <laughs> Steve Corley, uh, West Kingston, Rhode Island, and uh, you know, I read the budget. It's a, definitely a good piece of work, and uh, you know, we're talking about uh, you know leisures like seven million and uh, the total for the next six years, seven eight million, and the total is 20, 20 million. And uh, you know, I I have no complaints about that. I think that's a a good thing to be doing for our community. And uh, I think that if you move the library up into the leisure, you, you even make that number higher, which I, I I think is a good thing to do. I happen to live uh, at the intersection of Stony Fort and Plains Road, the place I works on Liberty Lane, and I frequently drive on that uh, section of road, uh, Fairgrounds Road from uh, 138 to uh, Watts Corner Road. And uh, uh, those are definitely roads in need of uh, repair. And uh, it's good to see those on the budget. And uh, uh, the one thing I, I saw in the budget was uh, to talk about South, uh, South Road School. And uh, basically, there's nothing in long-term planning with South Road School. And the, the, the thing the budget says is that because, well, the funds come from uh, a different different area they come they come out of the the rents received well you know as a guy trying to read the budget rents received is income and what you're going to do with that money is expenses and i really have no idea to know what you're going to do to to maintain that building that's a it's expense to me as a taxpayer and i've said before you know right now uh, i think there's an extra school besides south road based on what the uh, school superintendent said last year they could close she picked two different schools. One, she said she'd save you $300,000 a year. The other, she said she'd save you $800,000 a year. Maybe I got the numbers wrong, but that's what I think I remember from last year. And uh, in a capital improvement project, you talk, you have two schools that have a million dollar uh, expenses out the next uh, six years, one Matunic and the other West Kingston. And uh, $1 million is 5% of the current uh, six year plan. And 5% uh, is a significant number. And uh, uh, I've always said that I think West Kingston should be the school that's closed because of its location and it's more valuable to the, to the town as a, uh, as a uh, place for business to grow. But having said that aside, I mean, there's a, there's a significant amount of money and, and I just kind of like to, you know, I came to the capital, the, the budget meeting between the school and the, and the town. And I, I kind of had this misconception about you guys would have back and forth with me talking about that stuff. And I guess the reason I'm here today is just to kind of encourage you to have a dialogue with the school, you know, about what you really, what the school really thinks the plan is for the next few years. Because if they are going to close the school, you know, I, I would think the town would kind of want to say, well, let's do this one because overall the effect is such and such, you know. And uh, I just think it's worth the dialogue. And, you know, Six years is a long time, and you know the town is not growing fast. You know, town manager's report shows that the number of houses being started is going down. Eighty-four percent of the people have lived here one year or longer. 
So that means that our population is aging. So it means less kids in school. And uh, 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 my fear is I think that uh, sports, recreation, music, and all that stuff are important to a community. We're spending $8 million for recreational facilities. And uh, if, if we get to the point where the school goes, but well, we can't support sports and music anymore, then I, I just think that's my fear. It's going to be a sad place to be headed. And uh, thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Steve. Um, just a reminder also that the school committee does have their budget work session um, tomorrow and also January 31st. Eller, if I could just clarify a couple of points. As far as South Road School is concerned, a capital reserve fund was established several years ago at the time that the school was uh, leased. At that time, all of the revenues generated from the uh, lease payments came into the capital reserve fund so that it could be used for the renovation and upkeep of that building, as well as the monies can be used to pay the debt service still outstanding on the remaining bonds that were used to uh, repair the roof there several years ago. At this point, there's about $308,000 that's in that reserve fund. Of that $308,000, uh, we're looking at over the next uh, several years about $70,000 in debt service payments that will come out of that, uh, out of that fund. So that would uh, put us somewhere in the area of around uh, $225,000 that's available uh, without touching property tax or school funds to be able to renovate or upgrade that building if need be for whatever new purpose it would be. The school committee has also uh, put out a, uh, uh, a request for proposal for a new lease agreement for that building. I think that they were looking at anywhere from a 12 month to an 18 month or 24 month lease. Uh, that is still under negotiation with a party that did submit a proposal for leasing a portion of that building. If that lease were to materialize, again, that money would stay within that reserve fund for South Road School. Until South Road School is declared un, uh, unnecessary for the education system and is turned back to the council for control of the building, we would continue to uh, ensure that the monies that came in through any rental agreement would stay with the building so that the facilities could be upgraded and maintained, or at minimum maintained, uh, so that they don't cost taxpayers at the future. Uh, dollars that uh, uh, would be uh, unnecessary, nor are we going to allow those dollars to be used for operational purposes in the school system uh, when we're concerned that that building may have a, a future maintenance cost associated with it. Thanks um, for clarifying that, Steve. Further questions from the public? Okay, seeing none, Jim. Well, uh, Steve, w one more time. You said of the $11,200,000 um, that uh, we'll need in, in bonding over the next six years, uh, it was $6.5 million that's already been authorized. So that's therefore, correct. only another $4.7 million that have to go to the voters? That's correct. Okay. Uh, would that be done in 2012 or 12, 14? The recommendation in the, in the, uh, the budget document would be to have it go at the uh, 2012 uh, and again, the beauty of the capital improvement program with all of the projects here, all the funding schedules are that they're looked at on a yearly basis. What I would suggest is that we look at this again next year in advance of determining what enabling legislation we would, new, uh, we would need in advance of the November of 12. If in fact we're not going to need some of that money until 14, then we could delay the bonding authorization uh, if necessary. But again, recognize that bonding authorization and the actual selling of the bonds are two different things. We could, uh, we could authorize those bonds in 12 and still not use the uh, bond proceeds and actually put it to market for several years thereafter. So the council would still have control. The only thing that, uh, that we would want to do is to ensure that uh, the monies were available if the project was uh, uh, was scheduled within a, an 18 to 24 months for, uh, for construction purposes. Do you use in the um, gross bonded um, debt, do you use the authorized amounts even though we haven't uh, gone to the market and used the money? 
No, what, when we look Don't at gross, you know, when we look at gross bonded debt, gross bonded debt is only what has been placed into the market. Okay, thank but you. But in, in the debt schedules that I've developed for you, we are showing you two different schedules. One schedule shows you debt that's been incurred to date, and the second schedule shows you that debt incurred to date plus if we integrated uh, the uh, the eleven point two five million dollars over that six year term. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, further questions before we close the public hearing? Okay, do we have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 500. And do we have a motion to approve the 11, 12, 16, 17 capital improvement program? I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries seven five zero zero. Excuse me. And thank you, Steve and the staff, for putting this together. It, it's a fair budget to meet the needs of the taxpayers here and to meet the needs of our community. So thank you. Couldn't do it without the staff. I know. Which brings us to communications. We have a resolution adopted December 13th, 2010 by the Jamestown Town Council requesting the General Assembly to enact comprehensive extended producer responsibility legislation is received, placed on file in the Town Council for the directs. Polly? Well, I think we discussed this during the work session <coughs> and we decided we would place this on file. It meant more money for the towns and we didn't uh, think it was something that like Thank you, Polly. We have, a, we have a motion and a second for the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 5-0-0. Communications item B. A communication dated January 10th, 2011 to Governor Lincoln D. Chafee from David J. Crook, Senior President Pro Tem Narragansett Town Council, suggesting the formation of an advisory panel of city and town representatives to comment informally on the statewide issues from a municipal perspective is received, placed on file, and the town council further directs. We discussed this at uh, the work session, and this is a letter from uh, President Pro Tem David Crook, but it doesn't look like it's been adopted by his town council, and it's not in the form of a resolution. It seems like it's for our information only. I, I, I think we discussed placing it on file, so. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second for the discussion. Ready to vote, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extension, motion carries 500. Brings us to communication F. This is a communication dated January 18th, 2011, from Council Vice President Carol Hagen McEntee, proposing adoption of a resolution concerning the impact of coastal erosion in Matunic is received, placed on file in the Town Council for the directs. And I'll ask you, Carol, to address this. I uh, propose this resolution because of the uh, the uh, enormous amount of erosion that's been going on in Matunic Beach and the effect it's had on residents and uh, businesses located on the beach, especially the Ocean Mist and uh, Tara's Joyce's uh, Family Pub, along with uh, several other residences. It recently has come to my attention that uh, CRMC, well, I shouldn't say recently, uh, it's been an ongoing problem, that Coastal Resource uh, Management Council has been issuing um, violations uh, against these property owners for attempting to protect their property from the severe erosion that uh, is practically overtaking their land and uh, buildings. Um, so in response to that, I discussed it with the uh, staff at the uh, town hall. And uh, it, it, with further uh, investigation, it turns up that there were approximately 11 um, cease and desist violations issued by CRMC in uh, the year 2010. And most recently, one was issued to the Ocean Mist. 
Now, along with these violations comes administrative fines and uh, per diem uh, fines that uh, cost the property owner quite a bit of money if they continue, if the violation continues. And in many respects, uh, these are just attempts by each property owner to protect their property from sinking into the ocean. So what I'm asking um, the council to uh, go along with me on this is uh, that we ask Coastal Resource Management to take a flexible approach in the application of its rules and regulations, especially as it uh, affects the Matunic area and to understand the critical nature of what's happening down there. And also uh, to understand the, the situation the town is in, uh, that the Matunic Beach Road is in a, uh, also threatened by erosion, which is uh, something that we all have to worry about for public safety purposes. But um, in asking that CRMC take a flexible approach uh, and review their program policies and become more of an advocator as opposed to a regulator for, uh, for the situation that exists with the erosion in Matunic. And that uh, to understand that these oceanfront properties and their owners uh, are a constant combat to uh, fight off the severe coastal erosion effects that have neg negatively impaired their properties. And in so doing, I would ask that uh, that we meet the town, that the uh, Coastal Resource Management Council uh, meet with the town council and town officials and residents and business owners from Matunic to try and address this problem and develop long-term and short-term uh, resolutions on how they can handle. Uh, the impact that the erosion is having on their property, especially in, it needs to be reasonable and uh, economical so that the property owners can afford to address their individual problems. And I would like to send this uh, along to the governor, the local uh, legislative delegation, the um, congressional delegation, and uh, CRMC. So I would ask for the support from my fellow council members. Thank you, Carol. Questions here at the table? Jim. I don't have any questions. Um, excellent resolution. One that um, uh, we need to have a meeting with Coastal uh, as soon as possible, preferably uh, here in South Kingstown, maybe uh, down on the beachfront in uh, Matunic so they'll understand. Um, what we need from uh, coastal resources right now are recommended options on an emergency response situation post-storm um, versus long-term planning. And um, right now it's uh, really up to the homeowners, business owners, uh, how to respond to, um, uh, to storm damage or uh, uh, what's predicted here in the very uh, near term. And this is a very difficult role to be in because, uh, as Carol mentioned, um, rather than being advocates, uh, they're being regulatory, much easier to find and say no and to stop rather than give us ideas and some alternatives. Uh, here's what we've seen work in some other areas. Here's what you need to do as a team, not individually. Um, we need that kind of response from Coastal Resources, uh, which uh, uh, to date um, has been sorely lacking. And the other thing I think Coastal needs to um, pull together here, we've got areas uh, like this uh, uh, in Matunic, and you've got it along the shoreline. We've, had, we've got developed areas which have been develop, developed for centuries, uh, business, old hotels, residential, and yet we have huge beach areas. So I think we need a different kind of designation from Coastal, yet I think they really... Um, I think everything falls under the same designation, whether it's a wide open beach and open space versus a, a developed area. And uh, so that's, um, this is something we really need to all get on board. Uh, hopefully, uh, unfortunately, I should say, um, earmarks are gone in Washington, so a lot of that extra money that uh, uh, may have helped situations like this, as well as a cliff walk in Newport, so on and so forth, uh, earmark, earmarks are gone out of the um, uh, federal budget right now for the year coming up. So um, we've got to think of um, uh, what we can do uh, at a local level, uh, not only uh, for the business owners, uh, residences, but the town too. We've got to be able to respond to these issues. And it's just not um, 
uh, where we talked about this evening, um, Joyce's Family Pub, Tara's, and um, Ocean Mist. Um, you know, if everybody read the paper yesterday, they'll see uh, coastal sites retreat from the rising seas from worsening erosion. Uh, talked about California, North Carolina, water rising three times faster than 100 years ago. And the one in North Carolina talks about a um, one meter, I, I guess what, uh, three feet, three inches uh, uh, that the water could rise over the next year. So our problem is not only uh, in Matunic, but if you saw the storm from last March, uh, Succotash Road, and uh, we take care of the public safety of those people down in Jerusalem, and that's another area south of the bridge that could be underwater you know, during this century. So we really need um, uh, an effort here from Coastal to uh, uh, recognize that there are emergency situations, give us alternatives, don't fine us, don't make us go through an engineering process that would take years, and by that time probably the property would be lost. We need a twofold approach, short term like that and long term. So resolution deserves strongest support and an immediate response from Coastal uh, down here at our shores at the earliest convenient that um, uh, can be uh, probably negotiated is the right word to use. Thank you, Jim. Polly? Uh, I do think it's important to meet with Coastal. I think we have to remember that uh, they have the whole uh, shoreline. We remember the houses, uh, well, five years, 10 years ago, that uh, right down there that moved the houses back. Some of them moved them back. Some mm -hmm. of them put sandbags up. Uh, Nothing seems to work. I think realistically, um, it's a it's a difficult battle, but I do think coastal needs to be more proactive, and we need to push them into it. But I think it's important to go along with what coastal says because I think what one person does affects the people on both sides, the businesses on both sides. So I think we have to listen to what they say, but I think we have to encourage them to say something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good resolution. Thanks. Thank you. Further comments here at the table? Well, I, I'd just like to say one more thing. I mean, um, in the spirit of inviting them down, maybe we could have them down to Tara's or the ocean mist. And on a stormy night, uh, some nights when you go in there, it's, it's like they're on a sinking ship with a pail trying to bail the water out. So uh, it really is important to get on this as soon as possible like to say during the day because really one of the main things we've got to protect is really the road that leads to the businesses and to all the other houses that are down there. That's where really a big chunk of our tax base comes from and so I think it's actually more important to a daytime visit. Oh, daytime's there. fine. I, I shouldn't have said night, I guess. <laughs> uh, we all know that bend at the vanilla bean that certainly needs yeah. to be protected. That's where the problem all uh, arises. Once that goes, then we really got a big problem. Never mind just things slipping into the sea. And uh, I think that's why even in the work session when I mentioned about the congressional um, delegation being added on to your resolution, um, because they were very concerned when it came to the flooding this past March, um, <clears throat> how, how things were faring at the beaches. It wasn't the beaches that were the problem then, um, but this is certainly something that they need to take a, um, a look at. They were concerned then, we're concerned. Um, and so by adding them on, I think it's a big step for, uh, and it puts, I think, some um, kind of uh, more pressure on coastal. Um, when you have the uh, congressional delegation involved with it. And I know I've, I've spoken with Senator Sosnowski about this issue too. It's certainly something that's a, um, a big concern for her and I think that she'll definitely work with us and be an advocate, you know, to coastal resource um, for the town, so. Thank you, Kathy. Steve, is there anything further you'd like to add? No, I think the, uh, the resolution as drafted at this point uh, really states a, a strong municipal position. The only thing I would note is that there's really two divisions within Coastal. The Coastal staff really prepares the reports on behalf of the Coastal Council. The Coastal Council, their actions really are to deal with policy. I think that, uh, that we need to get the Coastal Council to understand that our concern is that if they're not developing the policies to be able to work with the problem that's down there, then they're acting just as a regulator. And I think that the resolution uh, clearly outlines that. Thank you. Um, and I would just like to add my two cents worth. I'd like to you know, thank Carol and the Steve and the staff for putting this resolution together. It is outstanding. Um, and it's really looking for us to work collaboratively 
to brainstorm solutions with Coastal Research uh, Resource Management Council and put a plan of action in place. So thank you. Okay, so we need a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second for communications F. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 500. Zero, zero. Which brings us to comments from interested citizens. I would just like to um, make one uh, announcement that I was invited to the Martin Luther King celebration on Monday, January 17th at the church on Allen's Avenue. Um, so I went as a representative of the town council um, and it was a delightful Martin Luther King ceremony. Any other comments here at the table or from the public? Carol. Uh, I uh, spoke with the Chamber of Commerce uh, today and I just wanted to uh, make one announcement regarding them that there will be a uh, Rhode Island statewide chamber night at the Ryan Center at URI on February 2nd, 2011. Members and non-members are all invited and it starts at 5 o'clock. 5 to 7 is the networking event and then at 7 is the URI versus Fordham University basketball game, and it's $25 per person. It might be a good uh, place for people to meet other business people and make connections, network, and see a good game. Thank you. Okay, which brings us to town manager's report. As I mentioned to the council in the pre-session, uh, I directed the closing of the Dugway Bridge, uh, Dugway Road Bridge today. That was based on a state engineering report that was received this morning, a memorandum indicating that the, uh, the state had uh, done a reinspection earlier this month. And while they were doing the inspection, they also had both an oil truck and a school bus passing over that bridge. Both of those are not allowed on that bridge at eight tons. The conditions of the, uh, of the main members on the bridge were reevaluated this year. Uh, they find that at this point, the uh, bridge does not have a carrying capacity whatsoever, and their recommendation was to close the bridge. I directed the action to be taken. The signage has been placed out to 138, as well as coming in from Richmond, uh, and the highway department today uh, brought the barriers in to close off the, uh, the bridge in its entirety. Uh, we will be reviewing and preparing a memorandum for the council on various options. I think that the options are going to be very limited uh, within a cost budget that uh, would be reasonable for a bridge that currently services approximately 300 vehicles a day. But that information will hopefully be prepared for the council within the next few weeks. However, I do not see that bridge being reopened any time in the immediate future. Thank uh, you, Steve. If there's, uh, that's the only item I need to report on uh, this evening. I'd uh, answer any questions the council has on either of the two reports that have been prepared since the last meeting. Okay, I see no questions here. Which brings us to town solicitor's report. Any questions? Okay, and we have no appointments tonight. Which brings us to New business item A. This is a resolution authorizing an award of bid to Honor Lumber Company 251 Fairgrounds Road, West Kingston, for village green improvement projects materials in accordance with all bid specifications in an amount not to exceed $30,480 and as further described in a memorandum from the Director of Leisure Services to the Town Manager dated January 18, 2011 and entitled Bid Recommendation Village Green Improvement Project Materials. Steve? Recommendation is for uh, award to the lowest qualified bidder, which is Arnold uh, Lumber Company. This is for the materials purchase alone for the improvements that will be made at the, uh, the Village Green. Uh, council discussed this last uh, December when they uh, issued a uh, contract for uh, a partial contract for the reconstruction of the bridge and some other improvements uh, at the Village Green. We said at that time what we would do is to purchase the materials 
and have some work done in-house and have a, uh, a, another contract that will look at installation of the materials once on site. Thank you. Any questions here? Motion. I move approval of <coughs> item A. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ready to vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 5 zero, zero. New business item B. A resolution authorizing an award of bid to Liberty Chevrolet, 90 Bay Street Road, Wakefield, Mass., for a 2011 GMC four-wheel drive pickup truck and snow plow in an amount not to exceed $25,384, including trade-in and as further described in a memorandum from the Public Service Director to the Town Manager dated January 18, 2011, and entitled Bid Recommendation Pickup Truck with Snow Plow. Recommendation is for award to the uh, lowest bidder, uh, Liberty Chevrolet out of Wakefield, uh, uh, Mass. Two bids were received. The uh, Public Works Department operates with a fleet of uh, uh, seven, uh, seven uh, four-wheel drive uh, uh, vehicles uh, for uh, uh, day-to-day use and uh, snow removal operations. This is one of that fleet that needs to be replaced at this time. Budgeting for this was done, I believe, in the 2009-2010 year. The money's been held in reserve since that time. Do we have any questions? Do we have a motion? I move approval of new business item B. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ready to vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 5-0-0. Which brings us to new business item E, a resolution authorizing the town manager in cooperation with the school department administration to negotiate a contract with Schneider Electric Buildings Americas Incorporated at Brickstone Square, Andover, Mass., to perform an investment grade audit of town and school facilities with regard to energy conservation and savings, as further described in a memorandum from the director of planning to the town manager and school superintendent dated January 19th, 2011 and entitled ESCO Energy Service Company RFP Review and Recommendation. As noted in uh, Vin Murray's memorandum, we're recommending the award of contract uh, with, uh, for an energy service uh, company and that would be uh, Snyder Electric out of uh, Andover, Mass. Uh, Snyder is the parent company for American Power Conversion in West Kingston. Uh, we solicited proposals uh, from uh, 10 different uh, uh, energy service companies for, the, uh, for this contract. Three were interviewed. The interview panel consisted of uh, representatives from the school department, the town finance department, and the planning department. As noted in, uh, in the memorandum, what we're looking at is to hire a company that will do uh, a preliminary report. That uh, uh, preliminary uh, report is an investment grade audit of all municipal and school buildings. Once that is, uh, uh, let me uh, talk for a second as far as what that entails. It would be a detailed review of existing uh, facilities on all energy related systems within the uh, and building features. There would be a detailed review of the cost history for operating those facilities and the types of energy uses uh, by different categories, whether it's HVAC, electric, or fuel uses. There would be a compilation of a uh, menu of improvements that could be made to each of the buildings and a financial analysis that would look at what the savings would be if energy saving uh, activities were instituted and what the cost of the activity would be to what the buyback would be for that, uh, that, that purpose. There would then uh, be a final report that would be issued uh, with prioritization. That's what the initial study would do. If we take that study and do nothing with it, with Snyder Electric, we would be required to pay $30,000, roughly $30,000 for that, pro for that uh, proposal. We would then own the documentation within that report and would be able to manage it as we saw fit. What could occur is that we would recommend entering into a uh, performance contract with Snyder Electric to put their money where their mouth was. And that would be to be able to uh, actually make some of the improvements that would be recommended that had the best buyback on it. And uh, then they would be held accountable for the savings that they would have uh, stated in the report could in fact uh, uh, could be realized. We also would be able to use municipal dollars to be able to offset costs 
and to be able to use dollars that are available in, uh, uh, in grants that have been, uh, been obtained. At this point, the town has approximately $300,000 in energy uh, related grants that could be used to advance any of the energy efficiency proposals that may come forward. Uh, I think uh, this is an important first step in uh, being able to evaluate all our facilities for energy needs. And I think that having the IGA completed uh, by Snyder, who made the best presentation of the three firms that uh, were interviewed, I think will get us on the, uh, on the right path. So I'd recommend the council award as presented in uh, Vin Murray's memo of January 19th uh, to Snyder Electric and uh, provide uh, my office uh, uh, in collaboration with the solicitor to be able to negotiate in a proper contract for the, uh, the initial $30,000 study. Do we have a motion? I move approval of uh, new business E. Second. Further discussion? Ready Just let me vote? let me qualify. I've said thirty thousand a couple of times. It's really a thirty-seven thousand dollars if we were, if it was a standalone uh, if it was a standalone project. Thank you, Steve. Okay, are we ready to vote, Carol? I'd just like to note that um, the over the uh, the aspect of overperforming as they seek to establish a beachhead in Rhode Island, so they want to put a. Uh, have an office here and a presence in Rhode Island, and also that, uh, I don't know if you mentioned it, Steve, about them being the parent firm of APC and West Kingston, which I think it could, you know, bring, bring more business into the town, and that's always a good thing. So definitely I'm for it. Good points. Okay, further comments? Okay, we're ready to vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion carries 5 0 0. Okay, which brings us to um, we have a closed executive session here on the agenda tonight. So um, if we could have a motion for executive session. This is a closed executive session pursuant to Rhode Island General Law 42-46-5A6 to discuss matters related to or concerning a prospective business or industry locating in the state of Rhode Island when an open meeting would have detrimental effect on the interest of the public. So could we have a roll call, please, Dale? Council President Whaley? Yes. Council Vice President McAtee? Yes. Councilwoman Eddy? Yes. Councilwoman Fogarty? Councilman O'Neill? Yes. Unanimous affirmative vote to uh, adjourn to close executive se session at 8.35. Thank you.